<laughs> and they, they, you know, because I didn't know one time I got down here and I said, I was just joking. Does anyone know, you know? They were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. everybody's raising their hand. That's the thing. Ida B. Wells, they got their hands, and I got to figure out how they learned about Ida B. Wells. That's so what he, because I didn't have the names on there at the time. Yeah. They were like, Michael Jackson, that's Michael Jackson. That's <laughs> I said that looked kind of like Michael about halfway through his <laughs> his, uh, his transition. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's before that. Well, you know, leave him alone. I love Michael Jackson. Yeah. So Ida B. Wells, a uh, fighter against um, a lynching, a great journalist, courageous woman. They wanted to lynch her the whole time, but she didn't care. She just kept going. John Akello, he's the one who was able to kick the Omani Arabs out of of Zanzibar. You know, they had been in charge for a long time and the Africans there, the black Africans there have been under the foot of these Arabs for so many, really centuries in the area. And so him and his guys came in and did a clean sweep. A lot of people said, oh, it was bloody, it was violent, but sometimes you gotta do a clean the sweep. Side was bloody and violent too. Like, like Malcolm used to say, sometimes to get ahead, you have to get ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Fela Kute. We all know Fela. He uh, singing of resistance. I mean, tortured, jailed, beaten. They could do nothing with Fela. Finally, you know, he died of quote unquote AIDS. So I'm not sure who all believes that, but uh, Fela did it in his underwear, and nobody could do it like that since. With his 20-something wives. 20-something wives, you know, none of whom were complaining. So, uh, what can I say? Zumbi. So some of you, I don't know if anyone has ever seen the movie um, um, Quilombo. The Quilombos were the areas in the mountains of Brazil, just like the Maroons had people in the mountains, you know, there in, in Jamaica and the Caribbean. And the, uh, and the Colombo, uh, Palmares was a Colombo that he was responsible for. That Palmares lasted uh, over a hundred years, and that's just keeping the Portuguese out of this African kingdom. Finally, they just had to leave him alone because they were so powerful. So we remember his name. Once again, you know, I take somebody and make him zumbi because I don't know what he looked like. Uh, this one, um, I'm, I'm going to change it out, not because he's not a great person, but because I'm going to move someone else here and put him down here. But he's Samuel Wickboy, who was another uh, Namibian in the area, Namibia, freedom fighter against the, the uh, South Africans, Europeans that were down in that part of South Africa at the time. Because then I followed up right here with uh, Samuel Dujoma, who I, in my mind, when I was doing this thinking he had passed, he was an ancestor, but I couldn't remember. I said, I don't remember him dying. So I'd already painted, a, had a nice picture of him painted when I realized he's still, he's still fighting and kicking. So all I can say is, you know, this African revolutionary um, leader, president, Namibia, you know, coming out of colonialism, all I can say is, brother, you got a spot on the wall. Whenever you want to use it, that's up to you. Don't rush. But he's there. Booker T. Uh, Washington. So this is but only not... posthumous, your wall? Yeah, everyone here is an ancestor, if you haven't noticed that. I get it now. Yeah, and... and and he's still hanging. He's still in the government? No, 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 but he's still a live okay. elder statesman, you know. And uh, he's 90-something, he's 1929, so he's pushing 90, 89, but he's still... Booker T. Washington, and now that one sometimes is a little controversial, but I'm not sure it should be, because uh, Booker T., in his own way, organized a lot, trained a lot of African people, and there's a book out that's come out just recently about Booker T. Washington and Pan-Africanism, and, and there was a lot more that he did around the world than people know about. And he was also very avid about uh, making sure Africans were able to get in, Africans and blacks from other places were able to get into America and get trained and go back. And uh, he was also very uh, instrumental in funding a lot of black uh, organizations and operations that people weren't aware that money was coming from him. So on one side we do, um, you know, there is always controversy about you know him and Du Bois and their, their, you know, debate yeah, the political the versus the economic, yeah. political. But you know sometimes you're both right, but not on the right on the same things. So this man, we give him his due. 
Tuskegee still there putting out black graduates, by the way. Now, you know, my daddy said, he was already gone, but he said, if you don't put B.B. King on the wall, you might as well paint the whole thing white. Because <laughs> he ain't the answer, ain't none of them. So B.B. King, King of the Blues. I think my, my painter got his expression pretty good. That's B.B. there. Him and Lucille letting it all hang out. Walter Rodney of Guyana. Walter Rodney is one of our most brilliant scholars. And if some of you have read um, uh, how, how Europe Underdeveloped Africa, I almost slipped my mind. In. And you know, he, was, he taught in Africa, he taught other places. Of course, he was also murdered. He was also murdered in, uh, in his hometown of Ghana. He had home country, he had to come back to Ghana. He felt like that's where he still needed to do his work. But he contributed all around Africa. And he's got other writings, but if you don't read any book, read how Europe underdeveloped Africa, because it's, it's brilliant. <clears throat> Queen Amina, great house of uh, Queen, northern Nigeria. Um, hard to say about this sister, but she was able to consolidate power as a woman and keep it and keep a lot of it's 1533 to 1610. So this is way back before we even really thought so much, at least now, about these women as lead in these strong, strong leadership positions. So we have a lot more on her, but that's Amina. Look her up. Eduardo Manlani, Mozambique. Also, you know, I was showing you, he was basically the one who brought Samora Michelle along. And he was another brilliant thinker. Uh, Manlani was a medical doctor too. Yeah, he was also a medical doctor too, but he was of course killed by a uh, parcel exploded. And that's one of the reasons Samora Michelle ended up coming on. Well, he was already on, but you know, that's how he elevated to the point of, um, of, of leading uh, for limo.